Interior designers are focused on the needs of the human experience on the interior of a building. It's the overarching principle. An interior designer is responsible to deliver much more than just aesthetics. So when I decided to focus on commercial interiors, it became critical to be an NCIDQ certified interior designer because part of that focus was going to emphasize life, safety, and welfare, as well as the related building code standards and requirements that come into play in the delivery of commercial interior design. We're at Three World Trade Center. This is the new headquarters for Group M. WPP and Group M were committed to moving to Lower Manhattan and being a part of the movement to revitalize the downtown neighborhoods after the advent of the 9-11 tragedy. As someone who experienced the events of September 11th firsthand, I take great pride in having helped our Group M client create and provide a vibrant space for a creative community and the equivalence of satisfaction here is nothing short of a phoenix rising from the ashes. We are in 700,000 square feet of agile space for eight operating companies. The amenities that are here feature spaces such as a large assembly space, including a custom designed bleacher element that serves as an interconnecting stair, but also can accommodate a large group of 150 or more people. Asking for an assembly space of 150 or more people, it triggers the thinking and the requirement that comes up in one's training and certification. When you open up the floor slab and connect two floors, you equate what is the equivalent of there being a, a fire chimney. We solve that by adding a fire shutter in the middle of the two-story space, which descends upon activation and then hits the midpoint landing, which is where it lands and falls and creates the safety barrier. An interior designer is responsible to deliver much more than just aesthetics. If you're planning and designing space to be human-centric, it also needs to adhere to requirements for health, safety, and welfare, which means it can accommodate egress requirements, scale, lighting, texture, casual collision, and if we're considering the needs of a neurodiverse population, to give you an example, if we're talking about the specific needs of a community like the ADHD group, we're thinking about spaces that are calming, they are free of distractions and require a higher level of visual consistency and acoustical isolation. At the forefront of your mind in every conversation about planning and design is health, safety, and welfare. 